One, two, three, boom, mind pump time. All right, today's giveaway is awesome, like they all are. Here's how you can win free access to our amazing fat burning program, MAPS HIT. Remember, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. And by the way, we did this the right way. A lot of people do HIT training and they do it all wrong. It's just a bunch of cardio with weights with no real good programming. Not MAPS HIT. MAPS HIT is done properly. So you will get great results if you follow this program. All right, how do you win this program? Here's what you do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Talk about something that we talked about in the intro. Agree, disagree, doesn't matter. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, we will notify you that you won free access to Maps Hit. But you also have to subscribe to this channel and click on your notifications. One more thing, Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula are both 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Wow, look at Adam. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> you're out here, dude. God, I hope Andrew does a zoom in when no, you're rubbing you, that in. Uh, I was talking the other day about how uh, I, my thing was out, right? Jerry um, came back there and found it for me, so I'm I'm, hey, re I'm restocked again. On your which one, the moisturizer? Or no, the no, I have I have uh, no. They they sent us more. Dude, uh, I'm not even lying. What a difference. I mean, look at his face right now. Stupid. <laughs> did I show you guys? Did I show you guys the the picture of Katrina and I? Of uh, oh first... my god, that's hilarious, dude. God, dude. So... Oh, when you guys were way back. Yeah. So okay. First of all, hey, wait, wait. Hey. How did you describe like yeah, so each I, person? I, I, was, yeah, I look dying. like I look like the fat kid who's my Spanish teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. For the audience, all hey, this well, is an embarrassing hey, picture. Up, yeah. I, I'll give you the picture, Andrew. It's really bad. Hey, was Andrew. that? Come on, that was a role play you guys did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If not, we're oh, going to sure. now. Yeah, I know. I you don't know, speak you know, Spanish. Yeah. I, you know, so well, you're I, punished. I, it, 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 it actually made me feel good though, because uh, <laughs> you know when I look at the old, there's a, there's a picture that I've posted before. There's an old picture of Sal and I uh, at your gym, and I'm like, you know, <clears throat> I'm like stacked. Yeah, you're stacked. And I have dark hair. Yeah, you got full. <laughs> you have a full head of black hair. Yeah. I've got hair, and I'm jacked. I'm tan. Like I'm like, damn, we look like 15 years younger and better. And I'm it was like, like seven years ago. Yeah, but this one is like uh, this picture is 10 years ago and this is when could not long after Katrina and I first met we've only been together about a, a year in this picture and I'm still in the thick of cannabis the cannabis industry yeah. and I've got to be sitting close to 20% body this is before my transformation transformation uh, yeah. and then you can even see her like she has no definition in her arm this was before so remember we were together for three almost four years before I got a hold of her diet and training. The beginning, it was just like, you do your She thing. was just doing, she was running and just doing- Yeah, like kind of her thing is like, she's always been in shape. Like she's never yeah. been really- been athletic. Yeah. yeah, and athletic. So her way of getting back in shape, if she kind of fell off a little bit, would be, oh, just go run five miles uh -huh. a few times a week, do all her plyometric hit type training inside the gym. And I never said, I mean, I've learned. For, I mean, I'm, by the time I'm 30, when we're dating, right? I've already dated enough to know like, don't, you know, to, don't overstep. And mm. if she asks for it, then I'll give my opinion. If she doesn't, then uh, who am I to say that her way of training is terrible, right? So I know that's great. Ten years later, she looks even more. Oh my god! Yeah. And after a baby, even yeah. right. So I was yeah. I was sending that to my buddies and like. Said, so you you oh god there you are now it. reaping the benefit. Oh, what a great picture! <laughs> yeah, <it's> you <laughs> are now reaping the benefits of fat face. You know what I mean? You had <laughs> yeah. you store a lot of body fat in your face, and yeah. then so what happens as Finally you age? Turn the corner, dude. Yeah, because as you age, your face well, loses fatness. Yeah, but, that's, but now I'm, you're looking, I'm lean right now, yeah. so that's part of the deal. It's like, I'm, I'm, bro, you know how good you're gonna look when you're 60, 70. Yeah, I I'm gonna look like a skeleton when no one gives a shit. <laughs> when you got hair growing out of your ears and your nostrils and stuff like that, I'll have this narrow looking nah, fit jawline finally. <laughs> well, awesome. well, you know what motivates me with this? Like, if you look at like your your grandparents, your parents, like in in terms of like you know wrinkled skin, and everything, dude. My side of the family like prune, like like really, uh, yeah. Especially, I mean. My poor grandma. She's like almost like ninety eight now. Well, like would, she's wow, ninety eight. Well, you yeah. know, one of the one of the things I noticed about the Caldera more than anything else is I I was starting to get kind of this like puffy dark circles under my eyes. I like could totally see that, and that is like eliminated that. Wow. Yeah, I noticed a huge difference. So well, maybe your, I'll use the, them the too wrinkles and the, the dark circles, like yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, you gotta maintain this whole youthful. I mean, yeah, I would have never. Yeah. I would. You would never catch me doing some shit like this. Like, no, no. Ten years. I would, ago. I would, I would well, be I mean, talking no like way. this. I'd well, be look, punching myself. No way. The the formula promotes skin health. It's not like a pretend cover up, or you know, or 
chemical that induces <laughs> makeup, some weird. Yeah. It's, right. It, yeah. It's so not all you really, trick. Yeah, yeah. All you're really doing is improving the health of your skin, which means it's going to look, you know, healthier, which is good. Yeah. That's yeah. a good. It's different than than some other things that people will use. Yeah, like yeah. I know people will use hemorrhoid cream under their oh. eyes. What? what? You don't know that? I've never heard so of that. You know, don't people use like bees and like sting themselves? Yeah. To, to like, yeah. There's sting, there's, there's bee venom uh, therapy and then, so preparation H, right? That's yeah, the thing. It's you, a little better than stinging yourself. Yeah, the bees. cream you put on your, your hemorrhoids and what it does is it, it, it's a vasoconstrictor so it shrinks the hemorrhoid. People will put it under their <laughs> eyes because it does the same thing. Yeah. And it induces this like tightening effect. Just don't, don't go ask. grab one that's already open. Interesting. You know, yeah. Which is, isn't, yeah. that they, isn't that what they use? On, don't they <laughs> use that for baby rashes too? Is that the same thing or not? Not pressure, preparation age. Oh, yeah, you don't put desitin. That that's what it is. Desitin's yeah, different. Yeah. Did I ever tell uh, you guys the desitin story that I did with my sister? Did I ever tell you that? Yeah. Yeah, that was you remember mean. that? Uh, you remember that story? No, you don't remember what? that? So when I was, I mean, I know you guys went through this phase for sure. If you're, I mean, we're, uh, we have siblings, right? And definitely when you're the oldest, um, I think, or at least I think that most uh, kids go through a phase um, where you do pranks on your sibling in the night, you know, like when that was funny to like get up in the middle of the night, the shaving cream and make oh, them yeah. slap from their oh, face. Yeah. And, you know, we would go get my sister and her friends bras and panties and we'd freeze it in the freezer and like, <laughs> wow. you know, weird Didn't shit. Like you tell that, one right? of your cousins or something, the apocalypse was happening. Oh yeah. That was my little brother. I did <laughs> oh, that. Right, that right. Don't bring that up. That was okay, just, yeah, yeah, was, still, I feel I scarred him for life for that one. He's still, <laughs> still is trying to get over that. But so anyways, we were, uh, I was on that kick of like the shaving cream and, and, tickling your face and then making you do my sister and her friend were over a one night. It was like, it was Saturday or Sunday and uh, there was no shaving cream. I remember they were like dead asleep. It was me and my buddy. And we're like, Oh, we got to get them. And we're like going through the cat. What can we use? There's no shaving cream. It's like, here's this desitin cream, right? For baby rashes. Oh wow! So we squirt the destiny. Well, she doesn't, she smashes it on her face and she doesn't wake up. So she sleeps all night long with like this. And so she woke up and her like side of her face was all bleached. Like, it, cause that wow. stuff is like really oh strong. My oh my God. I was so in trouble. Wow. Yeah, Monday, my sister didn't go to school. Tuesday, Dude, she didn't go to school because she was like, the half of her face was bleached. Dude, I had, I, so I never, I'm, I'm I didn't. I'm glad you guys are still close. So yeah. I didn't do this. And I, I, I always tried to avoid getting into prank wars with my buddies because guys can get really. Fucked yeah, up. It escalates well, take real it quick. Way too far. Yeah, it goes too far. But anyway, I had a couple buddies that got into this prank war with each other, and I guess one of my buddies got into his. He had a jar of Vaseline in his bathroom, and he mixed in uh, what's it called, uh, like a uh, Vicks vapor rub, <laughs> in the Vaseline. <laughs> yeah, and mixed it in there, and so the guy goes to use the Vaseline to you know take care of himself or whatever, uh, and and no. ended up ended up going to the emergency. Oh, wow. Because I, cause I, cause he didn't feel it at first, and, you know, he's going to town. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> burn. What the fuck? Dude. And then imagine the embarrassment. Mom! Well, we did, I, I mean, so, at first, it's cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just to burn. You're this like, is great. Wait a minute. Yeah. Ah! I got in trouble for doing uh, Icy Hot in my sister and her friend's panties. Like, we did that, too. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Come on, dude. We did that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you have a relationship with? I know still? we did that. I remember I got another trouble. I, mean, I, I, I got trouble from my once. parents. So it, we used to as cool. kids, we we took turns on uh, setting the table, doing dishes, cooking dinner. My parents were smart. They like contracted everything out to us. They're not contracted. They delegated out to mm. us to do all these chores and stuff. Right. So one of the one of the days that I set the table. When you set the table, you also uh, pour water, a glass of water for everybody. Oh, yeah. And I filled it with vinegar on for for everybody <laughs> instead of water. So when you take that big swig of water, <laughs> uh, yeah, put all over the food oh, and everything like that. So geez, got in trouble dude. for that one. You too. were mean, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. way, dude. Come on. I like ju Justin. I live down the country. You have to find weird shit. Well, like ju that Justin's to do. pranks, when, the ones he told us, are just plain mean <clears throat> when he was a kid. Oh yeah. 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 He's like, here's a prank. Throw rocks at someone. Yeah, yeah. Throw <laughs> stuff at somebody and then make like, like basically like I told you the one about the brownie where like you put uh, dog poop in there. Yeah, put oh. dog shit in between and then the kid goes. Eat, oh my eat. god, it's so yeah, bad. that was terrible. Like okay, so that that's worse. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll admit that <laughs> I was worse. Yeah. Did you guys read the uh, article that Jackie sent over this morning about CrossFit? I did. Oh, you read it. Good. Yeah, I did. It was really good. So I didn't know that. So. CrossFit was already on the decline in the U.S. We knew this. Then the pandemic hits. T over twenty yeah. percent of their of their boxes shut, shut down, down yeah. completely. Yeah, shut down completely. Yeah. Which we, is we, actually we speculated that was going to happen. Which is you know, uh, it's actually I thought about it. I'm like, um, a lot of fitness companies got hammered. I mean, the, some of the biggest. Yeah, ones I bankrupt. think a good thing to Google because I. I 
I agree. I, right away, I jumped on the, the what you were about to say right now, but then I thought, you know what I should do is Google, and maybe Doug can do this for me. Like uh, generally, how Yeah, many? what percentage of gyms closed during the pandemic? And if it's around 20-something percent, then it's- They just follow the trend. Like, right, yeah, right, they follow the trend, wide. so that's not yeah. a fair-, that's not yeah. A fair um, yeah, but what they did is they're, they're, they were talking about how Greg Glassman- And by the way, I, I've seen some of the stuff that they said that, that he tweeted or wrote that they said was so terrible. I don't think it was that bad. But there's allegations that were separate from that that did yeah, sound. Yeah, the stuff was in the culture that was that sort of did being sound drummed up. Pretty it bad. sounded like it could have been. Yeah. yeah. Well, so he a, sold it to a new guy, right? Or new. Yeah, I think he sold it for two hundred million. Is that what he sold it for? I don't know. Yeah, I think he sold it for two. I know it was valued at over a hundred million uh, going into the pandemic. I don't know if he got his two hundred million for it, but I know he stepped down. He allowed someone else. What did it say, Doug? One in four. So a quarter. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So I wow. mean, it's, so I mean, that's right on trend. Then, so yeah. it's not that it's not that big of a deal that yeah. that many close. Yeah, I, mean, I think part of what would protect CrossFit would be the average low overhead mm -hmm. of each box. For sure, right? Yeah, there's anybody that I mean, and how quick you can pivot. I mean, I mean, if I was running a CrossFit box, uh, it wouldn't be that difficult to to quickly pivot to like Zoom classes to my small community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know what the number is, but. I imagine you only need about 50 to 100 at most paying members mm -hmm. to have a pretty That's exactly right. I profitable would, I, business. I so. would imagine that fitness businesses that that were high service, high dollar, low volume were more resilient than yeah. the other models. And then on top of that, okay. uh, um, my buddy who I mean we have s several friends that own CrossFit gyms, they moved outside quickly, you know, so mm -hmm. that wasn't Which would have been harder with a big box. Yeah, oh totally. Yeah. yeah. In California and when you have classes that are yeah. 10 to 12 people on average in Plus, a class. Well, Plus. I heard too that a lot of those were getting rezoned and so they they were like focusing more on getting retail spots. Like that was a big push for, for Oh, really? Time. Yeah, they I were didn't moving know that. all into like retail locations. Yeah. Well, it, Here's Which must not, yeah, that, that couldn't have been beneficial. No, with this and, whole and then here's the other thing that a lot of people, I guess, don't talk about, which I don't think we'll see statistics on because nobody will admit it. But if you own a business like a gym and you've got your local or state government saying you have to shut down and you have 50 members who are paying a high dollar fee or whatever, it's much easier to, and you know them personally, right? So when you run a big box bin, you don't know everybody personally. And there's so many members. When you have a small facility, 50 to 100, and you're the owner and you're there all the time and you know them, it's not that hard to call them and say, hey, here's the deal. Uh, you can still work out. We're just not going to say anything. Come in. We got the you know windows covered or, you know, and we're going to do our thing. I'm sure there were a few facilities yeah. that did that in order to stay afloat because there's also a demand. I know a lot of people were like, just let me work out. Like I want to just work out. I'll yeah, take my yeah. risks. Yeah. So you did know? this article kind of go over like their new direction, like what they're going to focus on? Like, you know, with, cause they have the game still, they obviously want to keep going. Well, one the of the boxes, one of the biggest falling out outside the, the sexual accusations and, and things he said was that, you know, that CrossFit was not doing anything like during this whole of the George Floyd situation and, and that they were not, they, they weren't doing their part to, for social justice. Mm. And so the new CEO has got more, no more initiatives in that direction than the previous one, which will be very interesting because a lot of people I know in the CrossFit con uh, community are, are libertarian, and because that's Greg Glassman, that's his yeah. political philosophy, right? He's a he's a libertarian, and and I think he's openly about open about it. In fact, a lot of the stuff that surfaced later on was some of his his, his harsh criticisms of other people and their thoughts and yeah. and, and, and political views and hmm. uh, within the community. So, really interesting to see how how that's going to pan out. Now, I do know that. Over 300 uh, of the CrossFits wanted to uh, de-affiliate, if that's a word, from CrossFit. 300? Yeah, over 300. Wow. Uh, and less than half of them followed through on it once Glassman was stepped down. So there was a bunch of people that said they were going mm. to uh, you know, de-affiliate. Is that a word, Doug? Or unaffiliate? Would it be un un or Unaffiliate, yeah. I think. Would it be unaffiliate? I don't know. Oh, Look. well, you normally are all over my... <laughs> You know, well, I don't know that one. Grammatical yeah. Yeah. wizard. Yeah. 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 English, not too good. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting. You know, this is an interesting time for companies. because It's an interesting time for fitness. Really is. Because oh, yeah. I also am just so intrigued by the movement with the Pelotons and mirrors and tonals and this at home streaming model. And, you know, it's, it, it's really, I don't know. I think they're, it, they're different people. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had this discussion with my uncle not that long ago about, 
you know, the, the streaming community at home video yep. type training client. And then the like gym goer CrossFit type of, they're very, very different people. Like mm -hmm. I, I think of like the person who wants that at home streaming is all about convenience. They're not so much the consistent hardcore training people. Like no, they're, they're, no, well, well very, about, very different. Think about very momentum. -based. Some of the main reasons why CrossFit did so well, I would say the number one, re there's a lot of reasons, but the number one reason is the community. Mm -hmm. You're showing up and you're working out with other people and you're in this environment, which is, is impossible to recreate. I mean, to some extent, oh. you can have some of that, but it's not the mm -hmm. same. It's like built in accountability, you know, and that's I think that's what, where they really like thrived and succeeded was just that, you know, you go in there and it's yeah. everybody is really bought in and it's a culture yeah. not affiliated. That, Thank you, Douglas. Okay. Now, so. that, that being said, I do think that the pandemic and the forced shutdowns and all that stuff, I don't think it permanently completely change the fitness industry but i think its effects are going to be long lasting i think in some ways oh yeah we're gonna that that's gonna just it's gonna there's gonna be some changes that are gonna that were induced by it that are gonna stay and stick around and oh, one of them is this new because here's the thing fitness companies were reluctant to invest capital into you know digital workout programming or this distant you know zoom type of you know workouts they were reluctant because what they were doing was working but what the pandemic did is it, it 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 basically motivated them to invest capital and risk capital in that direction because now they see that they have this Achilles heel. Well, I think the future looks for fitness. Uh, I think every and I think you'd be um, naive to not um, find a way to give your your members both options. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that I think that is the future. Is I think agree because of what happened in the pandemic yeah, and we had to go that it. route. I think I think there's a lot of people that said this sucks and I can't wait till the gym opens. But I do think there's a good percentage. You know whether that's 25 mm -hmm. percent or 50 percent, I don't know. But I think that's still a large enough percentage of people that said, "Wow, this was actually really convenient, and nice." And you know what? I would like to have this option that you know if I can't make it to my CrossFit box or I can't make it to my UFC gym or like that that I could you know. Have to, I can do it at home for the same price that I pay right now for my my current membership. So, I do think that the consumer is going to expect that in the future for all brands. I agree, and I agree. I think that the the what happened during that time also uh, pushed companies to invest in distant learning. You know, think of all the um, all the industries that got hit the hardest. Education was another one that got hit very hard. I, and you saw this huge rise. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the numbers are. There's a huge spike in parents homeschooling and in parents looking for alternative educational uh, you know, methods that are distant learning or digital. Mm -hmm. And I think that also is going to be permanent. I think there's going to be permanent changes there as well. And it makes sense. It, all of it makes sense. You know, it, we're, we're all reluctant <clears throat> to change what works. But and now we have all this new technology that really allows us to try different things. But yeah. everybody's a little scared because what they were doing was working before. Mm -hmm. But because of those the laws and they were forcing people in that direction, I think you're going to see more and more now investment in those areas. And you know we speak of the pandemic like it's past tense and over. We are seeing now places start to re-implement lockdowns. You know sporadically, it could happen again. It's crazy. They could. Now I don't know how people are going to stand for it. I don't know if people are going to sit by and just be cool with it again. But well, didn't, let's say didn't they are. L, didn't L.A. just do it? Not shut down, but mm -hmm. rather uh, it was just mask mandates. Mask are mandates. Back. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. So, but but <laughs> if it goes in that direction, I think these companies are like, look, here's a deal. This is our Achilles heel. We need to be prepared next time because, man, if you were a gym, you were caught like with your pants down. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what do I do? I can't do anything. Oh, I, I feel so yeah. blessed that we are. We built what we built when we built it because, I mean, if this was any other time in my fitness career, uh, other than this mind pump time, I, it would dramatically have hurt me. Mm -hmm. Whether oh I was gosh. whether I was oh, a, tr yeah. a private been, trainer been or if I was a a manager for a, a big box gym, like uh, any of those positions that I've held, um, or a boot camp owner, all of the above. Boot camp business is probably the only business that probably would have been maybe okay because it was an outdoor thing that I probably could have figured a way out. But that also was one of the, you know, when I think of the least profitable things that I've done, it wasn't the most profitable thing that I did in oh, fitness. Oh, I, I know. Yeah. what I, I thought a lot about what would I have done if I owned my studio during that whole period of time? And well, I know what I would have had to do. 
and it would have been a speakeasy. It, I would 100% have to go. <laughs> I'm serious. Got the illegal route. <laughs> I, well, you, you're, you're in a situation where you have to support your family. Yeah, yeah. You have to maintain what you're doing, and you give people the option. Look, here's a deal. I know that there's this thing going on. It's totally up to you. We can take this risk, but I'm willing to train you, but yeah. but we're going to have to do it hush hush and you're going to I'm going to lock that, the door behind I, you. Are you still following Ian Smith and those guys over there? I mean, boy, he has he racked up the fines and I know they're battling. I know that we we donated some money their yeah, way and they, they're, they're, they're holding an event I think coming up real soon. I here. think it's a lose lose for that local yeah. and state government. I think going after him and trying to make an example out of him is going to hurt the political leaders in a political way. It's going to make them look like big tyrannical bullies. Well, to your point, though, it's lose-lose, though. To, to not do anything about it, then they would have, everybody would revolt then, right? Like, if you don't, if they don't try and drop the hammer on him, and he gets away with all of that, don't you think that would also cause everybody to go like, oh, okay, I see, He this is the this is the formula to basically say F you to government, and how you can get away with it. So the, it is a lose-lose. And, you know, so they, they look bad if they come down on him and stuff like that, but then they look weak if they don't do it's anything a, about it's it. A, it's a situation where they gotta pick the lesser of two evils. Like, what do we do? Which one's better? And, you know, here's the other thing. Like, uh, when election season comes around, these politicians, like, they always do, they're going to pander. And it's going to be a very different game. Okay, here's your example, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't have an election in California for governor. But we do have a recall that got voted. So our governor now is at risk of getting kicked out. And boy, is he acting differently. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, very differently. Uh, because he's actually working because of that situation. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, free stuff for everybody," yeah. and here's a deal. And I'm sorry, I'm implement and, this new thing. You yeah, know, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. So I want to see. I want. I, I'd be interested to see what this all looks like when uh, it's just like always when election season comes around. Big smile. Did you guys see the article that came out about uh, Amazon uh, fully backing the legalization of marijuana? No. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, sure a lot of their creative programmers probably. <laughs> well, I mean, they weren't. They were one of the first people that came out and said they weren't going to uh, bust anybody as long as you weren't high on the like job. There would be no yeah. drug testing, yeah. right? I find it interesting because they're in the shipping business and they're uh, obviously one of the leaders in that. And I would make a small bet that there is a lot of marijuana that gets shipped from California to all over the United States. And then not being with Amazon, not with Amazon, maybe right now, yeah. but just in mail in general. But if they have the access to do that yeah. and they're pushing for it to be fully waiting for federal legalization and then crush. Think about that. Oh, yeah. Think about buying, you oh, know, yeah. cannabis edibles online through Amazon. What a huge business. Next day. I oh, think yeah. if you are in New York and you want California marijuana tomorrow, you know, right after someone, you know, cropped it and wanted to get it over there. I mean, we know that's happening right now anyways. And that's been going on for a long time where shipping cannabis across the United States is a very profitable business for drug dealers. And if Amazon becomes the first, you know, service to come out and be pro marijuana and actually help lobby against that right, or lobby for that, and then they become the main source that everybody uses. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, I was watching this movie Some last incentive night. Incentive there for sure. And it was depict. It was in the '90s. This movie was depicted, and like it was like the mid '90s, early '90s, <laughs> and the kids were smoking a joint, and they were all like, "Oh fuck, nobody catches or whatever." Man, it's so weird for somebody like in our age group. Oh yeah, to see. Okay, literally, I if I want cannabis here in California, I go on my phone, I go on an app. Somebody drives it to my fucking house, hands it to me, and I got like better weed than I'd ever seen in my entire life in the in the nineties. It's such a strange switch. You know what? Yeah. It, and then, and then literally in the 90s, you were freaked out like, oh, crap. Oh, I'm going to get busted. I was thinking about that the other day. I wonder like, you know, how many people are trying it for the first time, but not being insanely paranoid like we were when we first started. Dude. <laughs> you know, and just because like it was so illegal, so taboo. By, by the way, I bet I would make this bet right now. Now, weed can definitely induce a state of paranoia, right? Oh, of course. However, I bet you a good chunk of that paranoia back in the day was you smoked it and then you're afraid of getting caught yep <laughs> yeah, so no fear of getting caught probably a lot of the paranoia tends oh to yeah, that's an interesting theory for oh sure. yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's oh amazing. bro i'll never forget as a kid the first time i ever did it i remember being in a car and we were driving and i did a little too much 
And then I remember going, we went to 7-Eleven and then there was a cop car next to us. <laughs> and then that triggered yep. like serious anxiety. Like, oh shit. It's always there. wild. You know what's wild right now is when you hang out or meet with somebody who maybe is friends or family that you guys have that are like out of state or like with mm. a state that still mm. has really strict laws. And then they come over here. Like, I mean, you, there's times I've been, when I was downtown, when I was working and I had the clubs downtown, uh, it was not uncommon, especially by the university. Uh, where you would drive, see a kid ripping a bong in the back seat of a yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like seriously, you would see that. Like the you would never There's see that walking almost, their dog. You know, on oh, West yeah. Cliff. Like, well, I got so I joint. because I was in it right, and especially when I when I was in it, look, eight eight years ago or whatever it was now or longer. Uh, it was still taboo. It was still gray market. But because uh, we were constantly meeting with lawyers, and I, I learned so much about the the legal ramifications. If I got caught with yeah. this, the likelihood of this, and so I was really loose about it way earlier than any of my friends or anybody knew it. So people would trip out. You make would, them uncomfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd be. I mean, we would be like downtown before it was like legal, and I'd spark up, and they'd be like, "Oh my god, bro, what are you doing?" Yeah. It's just, oh, <laughs> I'm all, cops don't want to mess Dude, with me. You know you what? It's gonna, like I got no reason for them to mess with me over a joint. Like, yeah, you know on. what it's going to be like in the not too distant future. Literally, probably in 10 years is that you know it's like when you go over let's say you go you have a girlfriend and you're about to meet their parents and you go have dinner and then you know everybody's like let's have a glass of wine let's hang out let's loosen up you know it's gonna be like that like hey you want a joint yeah sure let's smoke a little bit and hang out i think it's gonna be like that i really do yeah i know it's going that way yeah no i, I absolutely think it's going be great that for way. interrogation of, of the potential boyfriend yeah you know? I just oh, find it really yeah. interesting that yeah, I am. Hit this dad yeah. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to do with my daughter? Are you sure? Yeah. Exactly. You ever think about her sexually? Oh, you do. Oh. Here, take another hit. I, <laughs> I got some more company news for you guys. Okay. Uh, remember, I, I think I shared Snapchat stuff before. Did you see their their next big move? No. Oh, man. I, I can't believe this. If exists. you listened to me when I told you to buy their stock a while ago, keep an Did eye Did you buy on. it? Of course. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you Well, I've learned. <laughs> yeah, I've learned yeah, from that. Such a good story. From that mistake. Okay, I, don't I, mean, it sound, I just drives me crazy. I want to punch Sal in the face every time. Like, <laughs> it was like four years. It, well, it's probably three years ago. Uh, you were all about buying HubSpot. I was all, all about HubSpot, right? So I was with our, our our marketing team, and and they were just, they when we were getting ready to purchase HubSpot, I went deep into learning all about the company, what exactly they do, how good of a CRM are they, blah, 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 blah. And I was really excited about the potential of them, and and you know, and our marketing team claiming that they are the, the best in the business, and they're just going to. And I remember telling Sal they were like a hundred dollars a share. They were eighty nine. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't forget. I remember exactly where they're at. They were eighty nine when I was telling Sal, and this is one of those mistakes where you tell people to do it and then you don't do it yourself. And now what is it now? Oh, so five hundred something. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I bought some, but yeah, I know. So, anyways, if you bought Snapchat, you know, hang on because I think they're gonna they're gonna continue to have a nice little run right here. So, did you? They partnered up with HBO Max, and they are gonna offer free streaming content within Snapchat, and your so you and your friend can watch a show together. Yes. Oh, that's a great idea. Is that not brilliant? That's a great idea. Now, there's other ways of doing this. I know I don't know too much, but I do know my son does this with. Uh, with Netflix and other things, but I don't think it's through Netflix. I think there's other hmm. ways of doing it. I don't know where if it's it, like a group watching a movie together. I believe so. I believe so. Well, don't isn't that me. what? Um, uh, I don't know why I was going to look to Doug to give me this answer because I don't think he knows what this is. But what, what Gary V has been uh, been touting this this what's the the new platform where we can have a conversation and then we can allow a bunch of oh. group chat? Is that what uh -huh. it's? Is I that, think so. Is it not? No, not group chat. Mm -hmm. It's called something else. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, do you know what it is? It starts with a C. Is it? I is it? I forget. I know our audience is like these idiots. Uh, I can't believe they don't yeah. know. It's so popular right now. There's, okay, it's, it's extremely popular right now. Okay, and it allows. Oh, uh, campfire. No, no. Nope. It allows no, us. It allows us. I know the audience is like screaming at the probably the, yeah. their their phones or whatever TVs. right now. Yeah, TVs right now. It allows us to have a conversation, and then I think we could even charge people to come in. Oh, I know what you're talking about. They can come in and engage. Yeah. So yeah. I would imagine that maybe that platform has that. I don't. Know. I don't know. That's interesting. But the, the Snapchat thing. I think, remember, I told you last time they were moving into the e-commerce side to where you'll be able to start purchasing things through through the Snapchat app. So that was the first big move when I first told everybody and when I was buying the mm -hmm. stock. Clubhouse. And Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Thank I know you. it was a C. That a boy, yeah, Doug. Yeah, yes, go. Clubhouse. There so I go. wonder if Clubhouse has the ability, maybe you can look at see if Clubhouse has the ability to watch movies. I would think that's where your son maybe. is at, but maybe But not. this is smart. 
That's very, this is very smart. It's fun. Uh, I would totally do this. You uh, know, call no. your friend up. Hey, let's watch that. You know. And if I read, if I uh, understood the like article, on your phone, you and then have to watch and it then do yeah. you have the ability to mm. talk? Which, to believe each it or other? not, bro, that's becoming a thing. Really? I only yeah. do that on the plane. That's the only. Th otherwise, Kid, like, kids, I all young, the younger generation I always watches. My son TV watches everything on his phone. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, that's crazy. Does my buddy give, is the same way. Does too. it give you the op the option to then, let's say, we all hook up and we're all watching something together like that we up? can talk like, to each other yeah, okay. on through the phone he while we're scared. doing? Huh? <laughs> well, like, Imagine the three of us hook <laughs> up. We're gonna hook up. Yeah, what? I see what, you, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> see what you're doing. Hey, real quick. <laughs> yeah. Just planting. Just seeds. imagine. Hear just me out. Close your eyes. Hear me out. Close your eyes. Here's a scenario. It's really dark. We drank a lot of. No. What's your What's your question? What do you What do you speculate? Like that. Let's say we all did this. We all connected through Snapchat chat to watch something okay does it have the option as we're watching it to talk to each oh other? i'm sure yeah absolutely that would be fun. i imagine i mean i don't know that 100 percent for sure because i haven't used it but i think that otherwise what the hell is the difference between you watching it at your house and my my, my yeah. and, everybody uh, hit play now yeah yeah you <laughs> yeah, know what i'm right. saying uh, yeah so i imagine it allows you to kind of and I, it looks like it from the picture up there like you could watch it and then that's all of our heads underneath there and we can be talking back and forth while you watch it. That's really cool. Hey, yeah. speaking of uh, alcohol and friends and all that stuff, because I mentioned drinking, my cousin, one of my cousins, who is the great guy, I love this guy, super, super successful. This guy's like a, he's now like becoming a venture capitalist, very smart, but he's also an asshole. So he loves to, <laughs> no matter what anybody says, he has to debate and counter. It's just what he does, and I'm sure it's a reflection of myself. I was just going to say, is there anybody else we yeah. might know like that? Yeah. So it doesn't get exhausting <laughs> at yeah. all. So anyway, I'll bring up something, right? So I was talking, he was talking about going out with his friends and how he's hung over and, oh, I hate alcohol. And I'm like, bro, you need to try Z-Biotic. And I've been telling him forever, uh, yeah. oh, you just, st another supplement. Yeah, I'm sure. It's baloney. Oh, you guys always talk about what... I'm like, bro, please just try. Just I'll buy you some. Try it out. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, he did. And I, it was very right? rare for him. He contacted me and he goes, I think you're right about z -Bot. I was like, I told you, motherfucker. Do you, have oh, you guys yeah. been seeing all the shares that we're getting on it right now? Yeah. So I was, so I didn't tell this to you guys. This, yeah, this a lot happened of shares. a couple of weeks ago. So z I actually was, we were talking back and forth with Katrina. She called me on what we should do. I didn't even involve you guys in this. So here you go. Uh, <laughs> they were, they were actually talking about potentially pulling back on commercials because they're, they keep selling out a product. Oh, mm -hmm. they said that. Yeah, it's and it's become it's because of Mind Pump. Wow. So they're, I mean, we were their biggest, like they're literally their biggest advertiser for them. I mean, they weren't doing anything before us, and so many people are are buying it out, and so they're having a hard time keeping up. Well, with the orders. I think yeah. their repurchase it works. Dude. Well, that's why the repurchase rate it speaks for. I mean, it's one of those. Try it that, once, and I swear to God, you're gonna be you're gonna be like, I need this is the most insane thing. And and the, what I tell people is because people were like, oh man, I felt like crap the next day. Listen. It, if you don't sleep really good, I feel like it ain't gonna give you sleep. Yeah, it doesn't make you. It ain't sleep gonna make you hydrate better. It gets rid of the hangover feeling, the headache, the nosh, being nauseous and feeling like that. Inflamed. Yeah, that's what it, it what it yeah. eliminates. I mean, if yeah. you stay up and you know drink till four in the morning or don't go to bed and do cocaine all night, like of course, you're not gonna, <laughs> of course you're not gonna feel good the next day. No, no, you know juice is gonna make you feel better. With they that. need a product for cocaine. Don't yeah. They? yeah, do a cocaine. I, I don't. Yeah. Feel I fine. say that because I was like. Go, someone was telling me like, oh, two. that shit doesn't work and we're going back and forth. And I'm like, I'm asking, I was inquiring with somebody back and forth in DMs. Yeah, what like, else did you do? Yeah, if, yes, dude, doing cocaine. I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you it's Z, it's nowhere does Z-Biotic say that it cures cocaine hangovers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you That's, think maybe that has something to do with why you felt like shit the next day? You got you the got best friends. Of yeah, he's like, <laughs> hey, 12 <laughs> beers, couple lines of coke. Hey, man, it's Z-Biotic. I don't know. I think uh, that's a hoax. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some heroin. Oh, I still felt God, like shit the day come after. Come on, guys. That's crazy. Hey, speaking of gut health, so for me, when I do the Z-Biotic, one of the other things I notice is my gut isn't as messed up yeah. the day after. Yeah. Which for me, like the first place that I'll get messed up, anything, anytime my health is poor, it's my gut. That's the first thing that I see. Which, by the way, oh my God, what a difference. I'm sure people listening and watching right now who suffer from the same shit that I do, what a difference in my performance when my gut is healthy versus when it's not. Let me tell you. I'm going to give you guys an example. Literally this week. So because I came back from Hawaii, because we were, you know, change in time and you can't eat that healthy, especially if you're on a plane, whatever, my gut was really off. So Monday, was it Monday? No, Tuesday. So today's Thursday as of the recording of this podcast. Tuesday, I did legs. 
and I was doing heavy sets of squats. And I went up to 365 and I was doing doubles with that, which for me is pretty heavy, right? My gut got better the day after, which was yesterday and today. Here's the difference. I said, I'll try doing squats again. Two days later, today I'm squatting with 415 and I was doing 405 for doubles. Wow. That's the difference in performance that I get when my gut is good versus when it's not. It's so, a 40 pound difference on the bar. It's crazy. So the question that I have for you and the one that I still don't know if I can fully pinpoint about my own my own body and, and nutrition habits is I haven't decided if it's like this there's this there's these offenders like you know gluten or sugar or anything like that that it's really 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 bothering my gut and that's why I feel that way or performance declines or I feel inflamed or bloated or whatever I notice I can get away with some of those foods so long as I'm in a, a calorie restriction. Oh yeah, the to like, to, and I know Lane. Lane is a big person who talks about this a lot. And if I'm like, I've been on a, a pretty low calorie diet for like the last couple of weeks, and I've felt great. And I've allowed some foods in there that normally would really bother me, but because I'm in in such a caloric deficit, I feel like it doesn't bother me. Same. So much. It's only when yep. I'm in a surplus and I'm eating those foods do I really notice that. And so then it, the, it warrants the question: Is it more those foods? Or is it more of eating in a surplus? I think it's both. And, and I'm more sensitive than you are. So even if I'm in a deficit and I push it, I'll still start to develop some issues. But if I'm in a surplus, I'm way worse. Part of it has to do with, I think being in a surplus is a pro-inflammatory state anyway. Mm. If you're in a surplus, you're probably eating more of those things. So I might eat a little bit of gluten, whereas if I'm in a surplus, I might be eating more. Yeah. But here's the thing with me, which is so it's so frustrating. Even if I eat perfectly, if I push the surplus, even if everything's perfect, just pushing the surplus for too long. It's funny because, you know, Jessica, for example, will be like, man, you always, you're always relatively lean. Even when you're trying to bulk, you don't, your body fat percentage doesn't go that high. I'm like, honey, it's because I can't. I can't bulk for too long. If I do, it throws me off. So no matter what, even if everything's perfect, eating in a surplus just will do that to me for too long, yeah, yeah. which is a massive, I mean- Pain in the ass, no pun intended. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know? But it definitely, uh, definitely sucks. Yeah, so yeah. it's you know just just one of those things. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. We want you to go check out one of our new sponsors, Live On. Now, Live On makes phenomenal supplements like glutathione, acetyl L carnitine. They have B complex and much more. But they deliver it in a way that it's absorbable. This is a company that really takes supplements. Seriously, it's complete science backed, and you do get a better absorption rate with their products. I love their acetyl L carnitine. I take it before I work out, or I'll take their glutathione before I go to bed, especially if I feel like I'm starting to get sick. This stuff is legit. I promise if you've tried other forms of these supplements and then you try Live On, you'll see a huge difference. Now, here's how you can get the mind pump hookup. Head over to liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump. That's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S dot com forward slash mind pump. And you will get a free sample pack of all of their supplements if you just buy one product. So this is a great hookup. Head over and check them out. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Jens Hikes. What do you recommend for someone who has lazy glutes? I try really hard to connect my mind to muscle, but after a leg workout, my quads are super sore and never really feel it in my glutes. It's like that no matter the exercise. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I lazy glutes. I know. Lazy so we should, glutes. It goes from I sleepy like to lazy. I yeah, like let's it. define this for a second. So yeah, yeah. essentially somebody who's doing you know, traditional glute exercises, so like barbell squats, for example, or lunges, and they're glutes just don't seem to, to develop. They don't seem to feel it in their glutes. It's much more quad dominant for them. So it can be very frustrating. Sometimes people will get this with their chest when they're bench pressing. Uh, sometimes people will get it in their back when they're rowing where they just don't feel the target muscle, but they feel all the other muscles involved. And then the, the development starts to reflect this. Now here's what's happening. Now we've called this sleepy butt syndrome. You could call it lazy glutes. Really what's happening is you have a recruitment pattern that happens every time you do a movement. This reminds me of the weight belt uh, question that we have, right? That, that we often get where people ask about weight belts. Studies show that when you wear a weight belt, you still get the same core activation as when you don't wear a weight belt. So then the argument is, well, then weight belts are perfectly fine. It's not disengaging the core. The problem isn't the disengaging. The problem is how the recruitment pattern's working. When you wear a belt, your core pushes out against the belt 
when you don't wear a belt, your core kind of sucks in and braces. So what we need to do here is change the recruitment pattern to make mm -hmm. it more favorable for this person's goals. Okay, so how are, how are we going to do that? Well, changing form and technique is the obvious answer. The problem is this person is probably so disconnected to this favorable recruitment pattern, it just doesn't work. One way to do this is to prime before you do these compound lifts with maybe an isolation exercise where you can squeeze and feel the glutes. Now, does this intrinsically or physiologically increase the connection to the glutes? Not necessarily. What it does, though, is it allows you to feel the glutes more. So now that I have a little bit of a pump in my glutes and I've squeezed them with, let's say, hip thrusts or donkey kickbacks or tube walking, yeah. now when I squat, because I already felt my glutes earlier, like you know, three minutes ago, now I can position myself in a way where I can change the recruitment pattern enough to get those glutes to fire more. Same thing with like doing like flies before a bench press. Now you can right. start to feel where you want to feel the exercise. You have to, have to spend that time neurologically to really focus on activating and recruiting, uh, you know, that major muscle group. If it's something that isn't responding, you know, the way you want, like th there needs to be work uh, in that direction where, you know, you, you place yourself um, with exercises that you could use for priming, but really even just, uh, you know, isometrically, just really like reinforcing forcing that uh, ahead of time if it's something that you've noticed for a long period of time there needs to be you know quite a bit of attention and repetition uh doing that consistently before it's really going to start to uh, respond because of such a loud signal in opposition that you've been running off of forever with uh, the quads i would make the argument that it actually does help you use more glute and recruit that i mean when, we, when you do a squat, it's a, a hip hinge movement, right? And when you lay down and you do like frog pumps or, you know, floor bridges before, that's a, that's a hip hinge movement, mm -hmm. but it's isolating the glutes in that situation or as closely isolating as you can. Obviously, there's a little bit of quad extension in there also, but it's mostly the glutes that are firing. And so you are neurologically training the brain to use the glutes in that movement, which mirrors the similar pattern that you would do going into a squat. So if you prime that first, you train it neurologically to go, oh, this is what how I, when I do this hinge, this is where I should feel it and this is what it should be like. So then when I go in there, because we've talked about this before, I can take the same exercise and I can make it work a specific muscle more than the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I can go into the next set and flip that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And literally can take an, an exercise and change it like that because- Just cognitively focusing that. Yeah, yes. because, because especially compound lifts, there's so many muscles that are required to do that movement that, and I can control my muscles without having any resistance, yep. right? I can flex certain ones. So if you can flex your glutes with no weight, just if you could stand still and- Activate that really should be the goal, right? To be able to just just flex your glutes. And that's <laughs> really, well, yes. Pow, 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 pow. And that's what priming is doing. Like you are, you're getting down there and you're practicing flexing the muscle you want to work really well. Mm -hmm. Then you go into the movement that you have a hard time feeling that muscle, and all you're really thinking about is flexing that muscle. You get down at the bottom of your squat, and now you're thinking about oh, what you were doing in those floor bridges. When I was in the floor bridge, I was squeezing those glutes, and so you think yeah. about. Now here's the challenge, and, and this is where you're going to get the the people that are going to counter you. They're going to bring up these EMG studies oh, I know. that show it doesn't activate the muscle more than if you did whatever. Now, here's the problem yeah. with that is you can't separate the fact that I can consciously feel a muscle and now change my technique enough to, to squeeze it versus is it just automatically physiologically changing the recruitment pattern? But you can't separate the two. So I, I it really doesn't matter which one it is. The truth is, look, it's uh, here's, here's a good example. As a personal trainer, one of the hardest muscles to get people to feel generally is any muscle in the back, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't see it. Like try and get someone to squeeze their rhomboids or their lats who's untrained right. and they're just having a tough time doing it. Here's a simple trick. I used to teach my personal trainers. If you take a pencil and touch the muscle, that's all you got to do. Here, squeeze right here. Just because you're touching it, the person automatically can now squeeze it more right. because they have that feel, that, that, the that, feedback. that feedback, that outside feedback. Priming does that as well. So priming, I don't care if it does or doesn't automatically increase the or improve the recruitment. What it, what I think it's really doing, the value is you can feel it now mm -hmm. because people who have trouble activating their glutes can't feel them. 
They typically can't feel them when they do almost anything. I, I hate when trainers and coaches try and argue the I science know. and the semantics around this. When, when literally it's a go apply it. If you have a hard time, if you're listening right now and you have a hard time filling your butt when you squat, do some floor bridges, slow and controlled, and focus on squeezing your butt before you go train that squat, and then come back and tell me if you fill your glutes more when you train your, your squat. It's yeah. just, it's it's very practical. It's yeah, yeah, very practical advice. Uh, maybe the way we communicate it isn't isn't come full circle because the science is still not complete around exactly right. what's happening and going on. But I'll tell you right now from teaching enough people, if you struggle with filling your butt and exercise are supposed to be for your butt, do an isolation movement, do a, 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 a you know, a kickback, uh, what is it called? Donkey kickback. Yeah, donkey kickback or do floor bridge or frog froggers before you go into one of those exercises and tell me you don't feel Yeah, and then the more. next part of that would be if you want to prioritize development of your glutes is to just train your glutes first. And this is just an old school <clears throat> principle. You want your butt to build more than your quads. Well, then do your butt exercises, you know, because you could prime your glutes and then go into some heavy hip thrusts and do that and then go into all the other exercises. Like that's the other part of hip, that Hip thrusts are such a good movement for somebody who, especially that struggles with this. Yeah. So if you are wanting to build your butt yep. and you've heard enough times that squatting or deadlifting are great movements for that, but you struggle to feel it during those movements there. Uh, I mean, hip thrusts are such an incredible uh, movement because you can load it. And and one of the things you got to remember this when you want to build a butt, you got to. And this is the mistake I think a lot of people that are in this 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 category do, is they do donkey kickbacks or they do frog pumps or floor bridges, and they feel it the most in their butt there. So they think that's the best way to build their. You butt. still got to load yeah. it. So yeah. Stay there, yeah, and those are really those movements you can't really load very much. And if you can't a dumbbell or whatever, that's what fifty pounds between your legs. That is nothing. Like, but you can load a, a bar bell and do a hip thrust really really heavy totally. and so if you want to build your glutes you struggle with that that's a movement that should for sure be in your repertoire <clears throat> next question is from Braden Same. how do i get bigger forearms oh yeah good old forearm milk cows portion. milk cows that's, <laughs> that's what you did right, right. for a long time Look at, oh shit rapid squeezy yeah. that's yeah. That i saw you on instagram yeah, your little, throwing little jabs at your you little over. veiny flex there that was yeah, really yeah, nice yeah, yeah. I love it. I um, don't even know. Yeah. So <laughs> forearms are like any other muscle. So you want to train them uh, in order to build them. You have to train them through a full range of motion, different rep ranges. Some of the best forearm exercises, a lot of people are just not familiar with. Like one of my favorite forearm exercises, especially for the the top of the forearm, this kind of meaty, you know, uh, you know, brachioradialis muscle here on the top of the elbow, reverse curls uh, with with the thumb under the bar, a tight grip. Um, with an easy curl bar, like practice those. At one point, oh, yeah. I prioritized forearm training. This had more to do with with grappling than and it go did with light. <laughs> if at you first. haven't done those, you know, for all, yes. like yeah, it would be it'd been years since I did that. I remember. Oh my god, you just did that not that long ago, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Start easy because yeah. this is gonna be a tough one. You know, I I went on a kick where I was you know all about training my forearms, and to be honest, the 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 most success I've had with developing my forms actually, believe it or not, was not really focusing on developing my forms. It was doing heavy deadlifts and farmer carries. Mm -hmm. And I was all great exercises. Yeah, yeah but they yeah. were not, I wasn't doing them because I was like, I want to build my forearms. Yeah. So I'm going to do yeah. farmer. They just walks. had to keep up with your back. They had to keep up. I mean, yeah. when I was progressing my, my deadlift from, you know, originally like 200 and something pounds to getting all the way up to 550, boy, did my forearms grow to keep, and the strength of them, the size of yeah. them, mm -hmm. and then also things like farmer carries. As you progress that weight, if you could hold on and carry four or 500 plus pounds across the gym while you're holding on to a bar, I promise you those forearms yeah. will yeah. grow. You're, no you're, wrist straps. Yeah, you're bringing up a good point. A lot of times the reason why people's forearms are lagging isn't because they're not training the forearms. It's because they're protecting their, their forearms from doing a lot of work. Yep. By wearing, you know, wrist straps. That's a big one. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've trained uh, clients who had long histories of working out, and I would tell them we're going to put the wrist straps away, and they were blown away by how much their forearms responded. It's like, well, yeah, every back exercise you do, your hands have to keep up, and because you're wearing this thing that holds on to the bar for you or the the bar, dumbbell for you, your forearms are well, not it, required. It, it kind of reminds me of the last question we just talked about with developing your glutes. You know, you feel you can do these forearm exercises where you really feel it in your forearms, but if you end up doing all these little, you know, wrist curls with ten pounds, 
I mean, I, it, you, you can do wrist curls with 10 pounds every day for your forearms, but I guarantee you if you, if you progress your deadlift and you get a 100-pound heavier deadlift, that will develop your forearms more than that direct hit. Yeah, the, the, the mass builders for the forearms are uh, heavy deadlifts, farmer walks, you know, gripping and Pull pulling ups, yeah. heavy things. Then you have your kind of like your exercises that you can pump the muscle. You can add more volume without tons of damage, which include wrist curls, either where you're going in the reverse or in the front. I like them behind the back. That's an exercise I'll do sometimes. But reverse curls, that's a great one. I got to the point where I was able to reverse curl as much as I could, you know, supinated curl. That really did a number on my forearm. So don't wear wrist wraps and add a few exercises at the end of your workout to your forearms. And they will respond, you know, just like any other muscle. And here's the thing about forearms. It, we instinctively, this is funny too, when they do these polls, they'll ask women like, what body parts on men do you find the most attractive? Hands and forearms is always up there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because instinctively we know if you have if you have weak hands and weak forearms, it really doesn't matter how muscular you are, in the real world, you can't hold on to shit. So you actually don't have tons of strength. And if you've ever, you know, wrestled with an uncle or your dad, or you've ever, you know, shook someone's hand that worked in blue collar labor. <laughs> And you're just like, this person is just yeah. strong and they look strong. It's because of their hands and their forearms. And again, we, you know, we're primates. Our hands, although they're very, you know, we can move small things with small details and we're very, very intricate with our movement. Still, again, we evolved from primates. We should have hands that can support any weight that our body can lift. And the fact that we constantly avoid that, that's one of the main reasons why people's forearms lag. Next question is from Issa Big Moanting. Are there any good oh, exercises for your shoulders? Sneaky bastard. Uh, yeah. Are there any good exercises for your shoulders besides pressing motions? Oh, uh, you know one of my favorite compound lifts is for the shoulders. That's not a press. Any kind of a upright row or a high pull. I and I know a lot of people. Are like, oh, I hate that. It's not good for my shoulder. If you have the mobility and the strength, they're totally safe. If you don't, then of course, like any exercise get the mobility and strength so you can do them properly. But upright rows and heavy high pulls, they develop my shoulders like presses do. I mean, they they literally build my shoulders out just like a heavy press would. I, I would put them up there with those, you know, with, with presses. So I'm, I'm going to go a different direction with this question. Um, and this one's close to me because I've shared this story on the podcast. If you listen for a long time, I talked about one of the first, you know, body critiques I ever got was from a female bodybuilder when I was 20 years old and she told me I had weak shoulders. And so that became like a, a massive focus for me. And uh, I, I would, I like to think that it's one of my strengths now as, as a competitor was building. Yeah, I agree. Your shoulders, especially when you competed, were and, crazy. And I'll tell you, one of the, uh, the biggest game changers for my shoulders was actually just getting really good at working the rear delt. The rear delt is such an overlooked part of the shoulder. Now, it's a small part of the shoulder. So you think mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, well, if you want big shoulders, that's silly. A shoulder press will always be better than a rear delt fly. Yeah, overall, right? Like nothing – a press is – I'm not arguing that a press isn't one of the best movements for the overall development of the shoulder. But most humans, most people, especially people that work out and exercise, do lots of pressing movements. So you do bench press, you do overhead press, you do a lot of these things that already kind of develop the front of the shoulder. And the rear delt is one of the most neglected muscles that I see on people. Mm -hmm. And so just, and, and not only is it neglected because people just don't even train it, but then even the ones that train it, typically don't train it correctly or have a really hard time getting it to fire. They, they let their back take over the movement or they use momentum. It's like a rhomboid right. you know, lateral. Or something. So if you learn to get really good at using the rear delts and, and, and you start, and I went on a kick for a, uh, probably a good year or two of starting all my shoulder workouts or shoulder exercises with rear delt movements mm -hmm. first. So I could get really good at, and that, that development in the rear delt just, brings this beautiful spade look to your shoulder and 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 I think uh, complements the overall uh, tr training yeah, I of totally the shoulder. I agree with that and want to add to that a bit uh in being that it's it's setting you up for for better or optimal posture which then allows more free range of motion you know for your entire shoulder and your shoulder joint now to add on to that too we do have muscles responsible for stabilizing your shoulder in rotation which is something that people don't really consider a lot too which can be trained and developed as well which yeah. also you know will give you like a rounder more 
developed uh, looking shoulder in general and will avoid, you know, those inevitable plateaus where you get into like shoulder impingement issues and things preventing you from progressing, which is something too, if you start considering that now, we're thinking more long term, we can keep pressing further and getting further development out of, you, you know, the, the entire muscle if we set it up correctly. This is why um, the suspension trainer W's have become one of my favorite shoulder movements. I, I have done them more in the last couple of years than I have previously done ever because of that exact reason. The, the benefits it does for the posture, the rotator cuff that it attacks, the rear delt that it, it attacks, it's one of my favorite ways to kind of prime the shoulders before I go into my shoulder workout. If you're not using a suspension trainer and doing W's, there's a there's a great, great movement for your yeah, points no, you're making. Shoulder function is such a good point uh, because it is a quite complex joint. Um, it's not just the, the, the yeah, humerus the most that's complex moving. Ones. Yeah, there's the scapula that's moving. And we evolved with these very complex shoulder joints because we throw with accuracy <clears throat> very well. It's what, one of the reasons why we became the apex predator, right? But, you know, back to the rear delt, from an aesthetic standpoint, people think the side delt is what gives you the round shoulder look. It's not. It's the rear delt. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your rear delt, when you develop your rear delts really well, you get a very round capped look to your shoulder. Now, I was lucky enough as a kid to read an article that was written about Serge Nubray. He was a, a, a French bodybuilder. He was in pumping iron. He was the black dude that looked super aesthetic. And people even to this day say he's one of the most aesthetic bodybuilders of all time. And he had this super round looking shoulder. And I remember reading this article about him doing all these rear flies. And, and I was very lucky at a young age to say, okay, let me focus on this exercise. And it did. I used to have very bony shoulders and it, my shoulders became a great body part because I focused so much on the rear delt. Now here's a, a tip when you're doing laterals of all types, especially to the side. And then of course, rear flies. If you really want, this is bodybuilding now. We're not talking functions. This is more of a bodybuilding aesthetics thing. If you really want to isolate those muscles, you have to disengage or lock your scapula. Okay. So if I'm doing a rear fly and I engage my scapula, now it's becoming more of a row. But if I lock them in position and just focus on the humerus moving, now I'm isolating those muscles. Same thing with laterals. You ever see people do laterals where it yeah. looks like a yeah. looks like kind of this upright, you know, shrug or whatever? If you can kind of lock your scapula in position and focus on just the part of the the, the, the delt that moves the humerus, mm -hmm. then you're going to isolate those muscles a little so bit the, more. So the, the simple cue, another YouTube idea for you, Doug, uh, the simple cue for that that has made the biggest difference with coaching for me with that is to fly out and not fly back. Mm -hmm. So the tendency that we have when we do a reverse fly is to be, you know, whether you're bent over or on a machine, is to fly back to Sal's point. Right, and you want it to keep it in a locked position. You think about flying out versus flying yep, back. Yep, great cue. And that cue is uh, very simple and basic, but it really helps people understand what you're trying to say by locking the the, the shoulder girdle in yep. a in a position. And you use in a position. very lightweight, very light, very light not, weight. especially at the beginning. And then the other movement that I I think is. Uh, awesome for this. I was t I was actually just showing Doug uh, was and is one was became one of my favorite movements is the free motion bent over reverse fly and why I like that and I start with really light weight is you you've got constant tension on the rear and you have the cable over here right? yes you're pulling away yes yeah, so you're pulling yeah. it through your body and uh, so through and across your body as you're bent over. Um, it just, encourages that. Out. It does. It's a good way to uh -huh. somebody who's having a hard time, like feeling it in the real rear delt and teaching. It's a good teaching movement. So then, cause just like we've talked about in the last few questions, like once you get really good at feeling your rear, rear delt and you know how to flex it and activate it. Now I can take like upright rows and I can take all these other big compound movements where I can move a lot more weight and I can think about yep. engaging my rear delts. And then you, then you really blow them up. So I know there's coaches and trainers are listening right now and are probably hearing me talk about reverse flies and going like this moron. That's not, it's not an exercise that's going to build a lot of, a lot of your rear delts. Yeah. Not initially. Init it's really to teach most people who can't fire their rear delts. Yep. Once you can fire them really well, then you can take some of those big, heavy loaded compound movements, even presses and learn to engage the rear delt yeah. more. Next question is from Kev Petrishen. What's your guys thoughts and understanding of supplementing with DHEA for hormone balance and or improve testosterone levels as we age past 30. This was a really popular supplement in the early 2000s. Yeah, late um, 90s even. I remember I remember when DHEA became legal. 
it was DHEA, over, methoxybolic, and I remember well, those were plant. Those were plant uh, flavones or isoflavones. But you had DHEA, androstenedione, androstenediol, and these were these are legit hormones that are in the body that became uh, available over the counter. Now you can't get androstenedione or androstenediol anymore, but you can still get DHEA. And I remember as a kid thinking, oh God, this is legal steroids. I can't wait to take this, right? And so you take it and then you get nothing. <clears throat> and here's why you get nothing. DHEA is a few steps away from testosterone and it can get converted to estrogen, estradiol just as well. And your body has these wonderful safeguards where if you're producing too much testosterone, it'll convert more testosterone. For example, let's say you just go straight testosterone. You're like, forget DHEA, I'm going testosterone. And you inject a bunch of testosterone. Your body can take that extra testosterone, convert it to estrogen, and then you develop these estrogenic side effects. That's why guys will develop you know, breast tissue when they're taking too much testosterone, unless they're taking something that blocks that conversion. So DHEA is way up there in the chain of hormones when you finally get to the maybe the favorable one. And so that's why there's a problem of trying to raise your testosterone by, ra by taking DHEA. Oftentimes, you see an, an equal or more of a raise in estrogen or estro estradiol in men. And in women, you don't see, you see the same thing. You don't see this, this, you know, what you're necessarily looking for. Now, there definitely are cases where people are low in DHEA. This, is tip this can typically happen in people who are older. If you read the studies on the benefits of DHEA, it tends to be in adults that were that are over 45, over 50, who also have a low, who also have low DHEA levels. So is this very similar to like somebody who's wanting to take uh, Tongue Cat Ali or Horny Goat Weed or Ash no, Ashwagandha is more of an adapt adaptogen, right? So, but the other two, it only really works if you have low testosterone levels, and then it's really only going to help you get closer to well, baseline? I mean, it's different because those are herbs through, and they work through different mechanisms to make things happen. DHEA is a hormone. You are taking a hormone when you take, just like melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone too, right? These are hormones that you're taking and it, it, there's a lot of ways your body can use this hormone. Now, if you're low in DHEA, if you go to a functional medicine practitioner and they say, oh, your DHEA should be here and it's really low, then it'll help. supplementing with it might help. Yeah. Might actually produce some health benefits. And you see this in older individuals. In younger people, if I take a 20-something-year-old or 30-year-old who's otherwise healthy and I say, hey, we're going to raise your testosterone, we're going to improve your performance by giving you DHEA. But their DHEA levels are fine. You're not going to see... That's my point. That's yeah. what I'm asking how I was comparing yeah, it to yeah. Tongue Cat Ali and, uh, horny, goat and, and horny Goat Weed is if you already have you know good testosterone levels and you take those, you're going to feel nothing from yeah. it. But if you have low testosterone levels, you take those things, sometimes yeah. that can help those people. Yes. Now, let's say you have low testosterone levels and you're like, I want to raise my testosterone with DHEA. Not necessarily going to raise your testosterone. If the DHEA is fine. Yeah. I mean, it could raise your... I mean, there's a lot of reasons why your testosterone could be low. You right. could have a Stress. high, yeah, you could have low free testosterone, right? You could have high converting to estrogen, right? So DHEA is because it's like, I don't know if I could call it a parent hormone, but it's so up far, far up the ladder that your body, there's so many things your body can do with it that it's not like you're, you know, you can't be like, I'm going to take this and this is what I want my body to do with the DHEA. It doesn't necessarily work that way. So it's not, and by the way, androstenedione, Okay, which now you can't buy. This was the one Mark McGuire got, right? Everybody mm, made the big yeah. deal about him, which he Anderson, wasn't taking. Yeah. He wasn't taking that. He was taking yeah, the real stuff. It was just a cream. Yeah. Was, yeah. 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 Um, e Androstenedione is one step away from testosterone. That was the selling point, right? Take this. Your body only has to convert it you know, one time, and it becomes testosterone. That even fell short because your body also did a bunch of stuff with it and took it and converted it. And you'd see guys, testosterone will go up, but so would their estrogen as a result. And it wasn't that much. It wasn't enough to make a difference. So DHEA does, the studies do show that there are some health applications, but it's pretty much narrow, narrowed down to people who have DHEA deficiencies who also tend to be older. And that's where you see, you know, some of the benefit. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna, it's not really gonna help you out. Look, if you like our content, if you love our content, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free information. So we have free guides on how to build your legs and your arms, develop your core, how to burn body fat. We have guides for personal trainers, all free. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 
One of the reasons why we don't see patients as soon as we should is because we've all seen the guy who's off the walls. He's got natural high energy. You know, he looks at his his buddy, Ralph, and goes, geez, man, Ralph's fat and out of shape on the couch. I'm still working out. I got tons of energy. Nothing wrong with me. It's just old age, right? Mm. He shouldn't compare himself to any.